Over the course of the next few months, I'll be teaching a lot of much more involved psychological courses and videos um, related to astrology and related to certain Vedic astrology techniques, that, particularly the Lajitani Vashtas. So before I get into those courses and videos, I wanted to um, get into the wounds because a lot of what I'll be talking about in those courses are, are wounds. So in this video, I just want to cover the idea of the wounds. Um, so that you're ready for it, and so if any of you go into those courses or watch any of those other videos, you'll be sort of prepared, um, you know, with the understanding of what a wound is, okay? So, we all have a wound, and a wound is simply an element of pain that we carry with us throughout our days. And we're never really going to be free of that wound, but we need to become free of that wound ruling our lives and thereby ruining our lives, okay? Now this thing we have called a wound, it's very, very old. Do you ever wonder why the world is the way it is? You know, you're told there's good karma and bad karma and you think, well, why did somebody do bad karma in the first place? Why did that person come and steal my potatoes, you know, five billion years ago or whenever? And then next lifetime I stole their potatoes and they stole my potatoes back and better da da and finally, at some point, we have to stop stealing each other's potatoes. You know, you ever think about why we were ever in a condition, in a state, back in the dawn of time, in our first incarnations, why we might actually do something that requires a karmic retribution? It's really because of this idea of the wound. Okay? So, imagine the cosmos, like go out on a night and just look up there into space and see all these lights, all these stars. Look at some nebulas if you can, or look at nebulas, you know, search on Google for nebulas. And there's these gaseous clouds of fine dust and particles that are lighted up by stars around them, and really beautiful. And imagine this whole cosmos, this whole universe we live in, and how full it is of light and energy that's expanding. And literally we're dust, is coming together in very specific ways according to the mathematical and scientific principles of God's laws to create different forms, different bodies for spirit to fill with the most advanced form of that being our human bodies. Okay? And imagine the very beginning of that. Out of nothing, this process started. Out of nothing, somewhere out there in the galactic, not the galactic, in the universal center, the center of the universe, this energy started pouring out out of nowhere. And that out of nowhere is God. And the energy that started pouring out of that center, that center which is somewhere in the Greek constellation of Virgo, is where the center of the universe is, somewhere way beyond that, eons in time and space away. Okay? This energy started going forth to create all these lights, all these things you see up in the sky, including our own solar system. And the minute that that energy left that unknown region of God and started manifesting itself as the building blocks of everything, as the finest particles, as heat and dust and all this stuff which eventually came together through all these cosmic principles that the modern astronomers are trying to understand, to eventually create worlds where bodies like ours can be formed. So the minute that process started, the minute that first energy became in this creation, that energy became separated from God. The minute it became manifested to where it can be seen as light, there was a barrier drawn between that energy and God. And that is our, that is our wound. It's that separation. And that separation, that separation that started way back then of this energy, which is creating the whole universe, which is building the bodies we have, and is then inhabiting the bodies as our unique souls, experience this slash of separation from the absolute consciousness of God. So long ago, we'll never remember when it happened. And we've been carrying this wound with us. All the consciousness that's manifesting this whole cosmos has a separation of consciousness. Every solar system this consciousness creates that can allow for an inhabitable life 
and which can allow for evolved forms of life like we are, all that energy has this consciousness of separation. Every body it builds, every body it inhabits, every soul that inhabits every body that consciousness builds, has this consciousness of separation as part of it. Okay? And that's our wound. So imagine this. As this process is happening until finally you become this embodied being that has consciousness and self-consciousness, especially humans, we're so self-conscious. We had a response to this separation. We had our personal response to this separation called our wound. So we're told, you're children of God. So God says, you're my child, right? Imagine this, you're my child. And you're made in my image. And that sounds like, wow, that's a good deal, cool. I'm God's child, I'm made in his image. I can dig that, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, here you are, you know, in this world, separated from, from God, the, the love and wisdom and joy of everything. And all of a sudden, you're here. Imagine from there to here, right? And you don't even know how you got here. And all you feel is the pain of that separation. And you think, geez, I was told I was the child of God. I felt like I was child of God. I felt like I was made in God's image. And boom, here I am. There must be something wrong with me. You know, God rejected me. He looked, when I came off the assembly line, he said, yeah, you're my defective child. Get out of here. And boom, you landed on earth. And that's essentially a rejection wound. If that's the way you feel, about this separation on the deep level, you'll manifest what we call a rejection wound, okay? So, there was something wrong with you, so you were rejected, you know? And you don't even know what it is, you know, it had to be something, otherwise why would you have been here? Okay, so we developed this relationship with ourselves based on this pain of separation, okay? Or a person might think, yeah, you told me I was made in your image, that I was your child. And then you left me here to starve. You know, you didn't give me love, you didn't give me enough food, you didn't give me enough what I needed. You just abandoned me to starve, you know. That's the wound of abandonment, okay. Another person feels, you said I was your child, you said I was made in your image, and you screwed me. I didn't do anything wrong. You just totally screwed me and stuck me here. Yuck. You know? And you are pissed, right? And another person feels, yes, you said I was made in your image. And yes, you said I'm your child. And now you're picking on me. Like, you're, you're picking on me. You're screwing with me. You're, you're, you're showing me how I'm really not that by sticking me here. I'm like the runt that everyone makes fun of. You know, here I am on earth, just so far from really being your child. You know, you're just making fun of me, you know? Another person feels that, they just feel like they've been shamed by God. You know, that something about them is just shameful, you know, that they got stuck down here. That they're only good for being made fun of and being toyed with, okay? And we have these wounds. And so, it's just the different ways our consciousness responds to the fact that our consciousness is no longer joined with God's consciousness. And again, this process started the minute God started manifesting creation, before there was even human life. And of course, as the consciousness becomes self-conscious in the human form, it also becomes self-conscious of the pain of that separation from God. Okay? So we have these wounds. So we have a wound of being rejected. And so what do we do, a rejected wound do to survive with that wound? They withdraw. They go, well, I'll withdraw before someone can find out what's wrong with me and reject me. Okay? Or I'll withdraw before I get rejected. Okay, it's safer to withdraw than getting rejected, right? Okay? A person with an abandonment wound will go, geez, I don't want to be abandoned, so I'll figure out a way for people to become dependent on me. If they're dependent on me, they can't abandon me. Or, 
I'll be dependent on people. I'll just find this way that I'll be dependent on them and they'll be dependent on me and then they won't leave me. I'm going to create a glue that people won't leave me. Okay? And the betrayal person goes, well, for no reason of my own, I got screwed. You know, I'll make sure it never happens again. I'm going to be in charge. I'm in the driver's seat 24-7. I'm in control. If I'm in control, if I'm at the top, and I'm in charge of a situation, then nobody can screw me. Okay? Nobody can betray me. And the shame person goes, I'll just beat myself up. You know, I'll put myself in situations that I'm miserable. I'm just going to, I feel so bad. I mean, there must, I must be so horrible to have landed up here that I'm just going to keep on punishing myself. I'm going to choose the job where I, that I hate the most. I'm going to choose the person who treats me the most low, you know? I'm going to talk about myself in a way that's most demeaning. And if there's a choice between a great healthy situation and a demeaning situation, hell, I'm choosing the demeaning situation. They become a mass, so they, you know, they act like a mass socialist. They put themselves in low situations. Sure, I'll be your slave, you know, okay? So, we have these responses to pain, and then we try to deal with them in a way, okay? And these are very different ways. So the rejection tries to withdraw before, it, so if it withdraws, it won't be rejected. If it always holds something back, then it can't be fully rejected. Abandoned person tries to create a role of dependence somehow, either one-way or two-way role of dependence, because if there's dependence, you can't get rid of what you depend on now, can you? Betrayal wants to control. Those are really straightforward, but a shame wound becomes a masochist. They literally feel so ashamed. They just feel like they did something so bad that they deserve punishment. That they're just simply not good enough for anything good. Okay? And they embrace that. They literally embrace it. The other ones are trying to find ways to avoid the wound. The rejection person is trying to find ways to avoid being rejected. The abandonment person tries to avoid ways to be abandoned. The betrayal person is trying to avoid being betrayed. And the shame person is just showing themselves and the whole world how, how you know, horrible they are, how ashamed they are, how shameful they are. And even that's a protection. Because if you're already being treated so low, you know, if you, if you seek the lowest place you can find, if you make fun of yourself all the time and you humiliate yourself and you say things about yourself that are demeaning, even in jest, then, you know, you're putting yourself in a low place where there, there's no room for someone else to shame you. You know, if you already picked the worst job in the building, someone can't come and demean you and say, hey, you don't, you're not good enough for that job, you've got to go into the lower job. You're already in the lowest job, right? If you're already saying you know, unfair, demeaning things about yourself. You know, someone else come, come, can't come along and say, add to that. You're already hitting the lowest denominator, okay? So even this is this weird protection. If I, you know, if I stay as low as possible, I can't be shamed any further. And I'll be safe from that, that pang of, of shame, okay? Of additional shame. Now, obviously, neither of these are healthy ways to deal with this wound. But it's, we just want to avoid the pain. And so we adopt these compensations. Okay? But it won't work. What happens if a person withdraws? Well, when they withdraw, they end up rejecting other people. And then those people feel rejected and leave. And so what happens is there's more pain. There's more separation. See, all these are methods we try to avoid separation. And in trying to avoid the separation, what we do is we guarantee the separation, okay? The abandonment person tries to create dependence, a type of dependence that becomes so heavy, eventually the person they're dependent with can't survive the dependence and has to leave. And then the person gets abandoned anyway, okay? If you're overly dependent, if you're codependent, Nobody can maintain those patterns because they're not healthy, and so the abandoned person is going to end up getting abandoned. Okay? If the betrayal person is always controlling everything, the other people eventually have to leave. You know, imagine someone's controlling you all the time. You can't live under that. 
So then you're going to have to, you know, separate yourself from the betrayal person. And the betrayal person will feel, once again, betrayed. Okay? The person who's shaming themselves, well, how we treat ourselves is how we treat others. They also can take delight and get in the habit of shaming other people, of, of loving to condescend other people, and you know, love gloating over other people's weaknesses. And a shame person, you know, if you're in a low spot, you'll look up and you'll see there's a sense of humor in their eyes, not compassion, because they're shaming themselves and they're going to shame you too. And as a result of shaming others, eventually they're going to have a separation with those others. And again, suffer the separation of connection, which is what these wounds are all about. So they become super active in relationships. Okay? Alright. So, if we act out of trying to protect these wounds, we guarantee the wound is going to be repeated. Now, as I mentioned, I see the origin of these wounds as the dawn of creation. The minute God started manifesting a portion of His consciousness as this entire um, visible universe, these wounds got settled into all consciousness. Every part of consciousness, the every part, everything in matter, all the consciousness that's embodied in any form of matter, has this wound. To, has these wounds to some degree. As humans, we're most self-conscious, so we're also most self-conscious of the separation and that pain or the wound that is a result of that separation. And every time we're born into a new form, into a new human body, as an infant, we un start undergoing experiences that reinforce this idea of these wounds in us. We have parents that reject us, parents that abandon us, parents that betray us, parents that shame us, and reaffirm the pain of that primordial separation that happened so long ago. As a result of that, imagine every time you're born on earth, every lifetime you're born on earth, there's a parental figure or an authority figure that affirms to you that you're something wrong with you and they reject you. That affirms to you that you're not going to get enough in life and they abandon you. That does something unfair to you for no reason that you did anything. They just decided to betray you and cast you out. Or they just saw something wrong or ugly in you. Something was wrong with you. They wanted a boy and you were a girl. And they're shaming you. You know, it could be that, that crude and pain and low. And so imagine every lifetime we're born, we have a wound reinforced. And so we start thinking. We literally start believing the wound. A rejection person believes there's actually something wrong with me. And when people know what it is, I'm out of there. Okay? The abandonment person feels, I'm just not worth feeding, you know? I'm just not worth feeding. And as soon as someone realizes that, they're just going to leave me on the side of the road to starve. Okay? The betrayal person thinks, I can't trust anyone. The world's not fair. I'm going to get screwed. I have to, so I have to be in charge, you know? I just always get screwed. I always will. I know I always will. And the shameful person feels, I'm never going to be good, essentially. Okay, I'm never going to be good enough to be loved. I'm just too low of a cretin. Okay? And we literally believe we are these things. But we're not these things. Remember God said, I made you in my image. And you're my child. That's what we are. But we have these wounds. And we start believing we are these wounds. No, we're not. These wounds are just a memory of pain that happened when God started manifesting Himself as the entire known universe. But they're not what we are, you know? And we also have these wounds reinforced when we pray and we beg to God, God, please give me love. Please give me money. Please give me whatever. And we pray and we pray and we pray, and God doesn't answer, right? So we go, well, must be something wrong with me, God doesn't help me. I mean, I must not be worth giving to abandonment. God's just screwing me again, you know? Oh, I'm so low, I'm not even worthy of God's attention, says the shamed person, you know? So we pray and we pray and we don't get an answer, or he reinforces our wound. 
And we were praying and we're sitting there, please let me just get a busy signal. If I get a busy signal, God, then I know at least you're there and you're answering the calls for someone. And then if I keep calling, one day you'll actually pick up on me, but you don't even get a busy signal, you know? It's like we, we're so cast out, okay? But we're not that wound. But yes, the world reinforces it. We meet someone. The person is always going to do something that reinforces this idea of ourselves. That we are this thing. Something to be rejected, something to be abandoned, something to be betrayed, and something to be shamed. Okay? Because we identify with that wound. So we have to remember we're not that wound. And why doesn't God answer our prayers? Why doesn't God just come here and say, okay, here's all the love I promised you. Right? Here, feel connected again like I, because you're my child. Why doesn't he do that? He doesn't do that because we're made in God's image. And we're the child, children of God. That's why he doesn't do it. Because he knows that all that which we're hoping to have from everything, we have the power to give it all to ourselves. We can give ourselves all the permission to be something different and still accept and love ourselves and not feel rejected. We can do that. He knows that we can find what's worthy in us, what's beautiful in us, and which will make us never want to abandon ourselves and which will make people never want to abandon us. Okay? Unless we play out this dependence role in a sick way. He knows that we have the ability to be honest with ourselves, to face ourselves, okay? And find the truth of ourselves, the truth that we can't ignore, that we can't portray, okay? And he knows we have the beauty in us and the ability to find that beauty that erases all shame. And he expects us to do that. Okay? He expects us to do that. Because only by us doing that can he share his, our lives, can he share himself with us. You know? Only by doing that can we share our lives with God. Okay? Only by doing that can we truthfully share our lives with other people. Okay? And he knows we can do it because we're made in the image of God. So no, he's not going to answer your phone calls and rush down to earth and give you all the love and everything you're craving. He's not going to. You have to do it. And the way it, you start doing it is stop identifying with your wound. Stop identifying with the part of you that's hurt. The part of you that hurt is not you. It's just a consciousness of separation. It's the results of being torn out of who knows where when consciousness manifested this known universe, this visible universe. Okay? But that's not you. You're so much more than that. Okay? So, we have to learn not to identify as these wounds. Not to identify as a person who will be rejected, or a person who will be abandoned, or a person who will be, will be betrayed, or a person who will be shamed. You're not that person. If you identify as that person, on a, and again, by identify, I mean on a deep subconscious level, then you will behave in a way with withdrawal, dependence, control, or in a masochistic way that guarantees that you just have another experience of your wound getting stomped on by somebody. Okay? But, if you realize you're not those things, that those are just a feeling you have because of this separation, and you behave the way you want to, the way the situation demands for success, rather than the way your, your wound thinks you need to act to protect itself, then you can have a better life. Okay? If your relationships aren't working, it's because your wound is getting in the way. There's nothing else getting in the way of your relationship, okay? Ever, all right? I used to have a monk friend. He was a brahmacharya at the time, and when we would talk, and you know, we would talk about painful things, his answer was always, what hurts? The ego hurts, who cares? You know, don't give it that much attention. 
See, the ego holds within it that consciousness of separation, which is the pain, the wound. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be a source of pain. But who cares? It's not, it doesn't have to be our world unless we care and focus on it and make it our own. So we need to learn to have our wounds, but not have our wounds rule our life and not have our wounds dominate our, our way of being. Okay? Because as long as we do that, we're going to create situations that just give us an experience of rejection once again, abandonment once again, etc. once again. The very experience we're trying to avoid. Okay? So, some of the courses I'll be teaching will be in learning how to handle, you know, astrologically handle um, these wounds. Identifying the wounds, seeing what patterns you have to break to separate from those wounds, even seeing the areas of life that you'll be prone to having encounters where your wound gets hurt. Okay? And, um, so, but I really want everyone to understand this idea of the wounds. It's really, really important. And understand that all your pain is coming from this wound. You don't have pain from other people. Okay? We're children of God, which means we can be in any situation and be happy. That's what a child of God can do. Okay? That's why I have a story of enlightened yogis who get burnt to death and they just sit there and they're smiling while they're going up in flames, right? Yet, if we have a wound, somebody can give us something for our birthday and it could not be the most expensive model. And we can feel rejected, abandoned, betrayed, or shamed. Seriously. You know, you wonder why you give someone a present and they have a bad response to it. You know, like, wait a minute, I just gave you a present. And they have, they're having a negative reaction because they're getting that present through their wound. Their wound is receiving that present, not them. Okay? So I'll be having some courses on um, astrologically working with the wounds and counseling, if you're reading charts, counseling people with their wounds. Um, I'm also going to put links to two books to help work with the wounds. Now, different authors of books, different you know, psychological schools will have a different idea of what wounds are and what they're called and so on and so on. Um, one book I'm going to be recommending has three wounds with a lot of internal processes that you can do to help you know, get away from that wound ruling your show, okay? Uh, ruling, ruling your life. The other book is a book that's really good for identifying the wounds and helping you see how those wounds are getting in the way with, um, you know, particularly with your relationship, but basically with being with happy with people. And that book has five wounds, okay? And what's cool about that book, that book teaches you, um, which is really cool as an astrologer, how to identify a person's wound based on their body type. So the minute you have a client walking into the door, the minute you meet someone that you're interested in, the minute you find somebody on the dating site, just by seeing them physically, you can identify with what their wound is. So if you're with them and they, stop, they start to act out of their wound, you'll know, okay, where it's coming from. And see, when people act out of their wounds, it will hurt the people in their space. And so understanding that they're acting out of their wound and that they're not personally attacking you, they're not personally trying to hurt you, they're not personally doing anything. They're just trying to survive with the wound. Okay? And the other funny thing about these wounds that we have is, you know, let's imagine the wound is like my broken finger. Well, we, we, if I have a broken finger in real life, what would I do with it, right? I'd cast it, you know, I'd maybe put it somewhere where it's not going to get hit. And then I would just go do my normal thing. I'd be typing with one hand, I'd be teaching and waving around with one hand, I'd be digging with one hand, washing my dishes with one hand, doing whatever I do with one hand instead of two. And I would just forget about this until it got healthy, right? All of us would. we just do something like that. But these wounds, that's not what we do. That's what we need to do with them. But we don't. Instead, we take that broken finger and wherever we look, wherever we walk, we have it right in front of us. So we go over here and we go, hi, oh, you're a nice ouch person. And you go over here, and I used to ouch meet you. And everyone, every encounter, every experience we have, we have this broken finger in front of us. And so we're always getting hurt. Because it's the first thing. It's, it's really running our shell. We're smashing in our broken finger into everybody we meet. And so everyone hurts us. Everyone hurts us eventually if you have, walk around with your broken finger in front of you, right? 
Okay? Somebody wants to give you a present, but they hit your broken finger while they give it to you, and how good of a present can that be? Right? Someone wants to love you and give you a hug, but your broken finger's there, and they hug you and break and hurt your broken finger, right? It's literally what we do with the wounds. We hold them in front of us, and we're just waiting to get hurt. And everyone has friends that you'll talk to them, and no matter what you end up starting to talk about, the story always goes to the 101 people who hurt them, right? You know, we all have someone like that in our life, right? It doesn't matter what you're talking about. It always goes to the 101 people who hurt them. That's because we walk around with our wounds, right? And so everyone's going to hurt us if we walk around with our wound in front of us, okay? It's kind of like there's that joke. And um, the joke is the, you know, the lady goes to the doctor and she says, and he goes, what's wrong? She goes, well... I touch here, my knee it hurts, I touch my cheek it hurts, I touch my head it hurts, I touch my shoulder it hurts, I touch my heart it hurts. And the doctor says, oh, you have a broken finger. All right? So, that's what we do with our wound. We say, I meet this person and it hurts, and I meet this person and it hurts, and I meet this person and it hurts, and then this person talks to me and hurts me. And the doctor, the psychologist says, okay, you have a broken heart, you have a wound. That's the diagnosis. Well, people don't have any power over you. You're a child of God, which means you have the capacity to be in any situation and be happy. Okay, think of that. Imagine that. You have that power. God knows it. That's why he's not bailing you out every five minutes, no matter how long you're crying and screaming. Okay? It's for us to know that, to figure that out, to learn that. But if we're identifying with our wound, if we think that pain is us, then we'll go through our whole lives experiencing pain and blaming it on other people. No, if somebody hurts us, it's because we have pain. And that pain is these wounds. Okay? So, I want everyone to have some time to think about this idea. And then, I'll be getting into some courses where I deal with this, with this more, um, you know, from an astrological point of view. I think the first thing I'll be doing is a video um, I have a video called Jupiter is Your Man, and that's the most watched video I've made. Um, so I'll be doing a new video called Jupiter is Your Man, How to Fix Your Man. And this idea of the wounds will play into that video. Okay? Alright, enough on that. Thank you.